Hi, in this video I will demonstrate how to use Speed Actions for Photoshop. Let's install the Actions file. To do it, go to Menu Window, select Actions, and when the Actions panel open, click the icon at the top right here, select Load Actions, select the Action file, and press Load. As you can see, the four actions are now correctly installed. Now, let's open an image to work with. I will use this one. Before using the action, there are a few things to check. First of all, make sure that your image is in RGB color mode and 8 bits per channel, like this. Then, press the icon here in the layers panel at the top right. Select panel option and make sure that this option add copy to copy layers and group is active. Next thing, make sure that your image has a nice resolution. This, this image is in a medium low resolution for demonstration purposes, uh, but the action was tested on uh, images between 1000 and 5000 pixels. So make sure that at least one of the axes of uh, the dimension of the image is uh, inside of this range. Then make sure also that your starting image has a nice contrast. If I open the levels adjustment panel here we can see that this image has already a black point and a one a white point so it already has a nice contrast but if your image doesn't have a nice contrast you can modify the levels of the image or also apply simply an auto contrast before playing the action. Also it is better if the image has some details in the background like in this case some information that the action can pick and apply the effects to. It works very fine also with photos made in studio with a mostly plain color background. However, it doesn't perform well with completely black backgrounds. Ok, now let's create a new layer, clicking here at the bottom of the layers panel. And let's call it mask, all lowercase like this. Now pick a visible color. like this one, pick a brush, okay, make sure that your hardness is 100% or 90%, Not, don't use a too much soft brush, and brush over your main character. The resulting mask should look something similar to this. Let's position it. Okay, you can use any tool you want to make to create this mask, like also lasso tool or one tool so works very good. The important thing is that at the end you have a mask with transparency channel like this. So let's delete the temporary mask and rename this. Ok, now we need to create some space for the effects here in the right side. To do it, select the crop tool here in the tools panel mm -hmm. and then drag the bounding box of the tool like this. Create some space and press enter on your keyboard. Make sure always to leave enough space from the border of the image and the character. Let's see the world of in pixels. It doesn't need to be precise, but make sure that if the character is here, to leave at least uh, a thousand pixels, like this. And also remember the 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 longest effect reach up to three thousand and a half pixels from the character. So. It stops something like here. Keep this in mind when you are working on long images. After the actions playback and the customization phase, you, you can crop the image as you like. Okay. Now we need to create some cover here for the white background we have. To do it, select the background layer, select the marquee tool here or press M on your keyboard and make a selection of the border of the background 
like this okay now press ctrl j on your keyboard to duplicate this selection press ctrl t on your keyboard and now drag the bounding box of the trust fund tool like this cover it and press enter on your keyboard now select layer 1 and background together and merge on the result it's not very nice to be seen but the action will later apply some blur effects to the background and will make it look nicer okay now before playing the action last thing to check is to have only two layers in your file the mask layer with the transparency channel and the name all lower caps like this and the background layer that has to be marked as background you can recognize it from the lock here so for example if you have a situation like this like a normal layer you can select it go to layer new background from layer and set it as background let me clear these guides okay. now open the actions panel as you can see there are four actions inside the actions panel and since we want to send the blur effects to the right we will be using the right action you can also open the action uh, by clicking on its arrow and then click play during the playback you will see the progress of the action here on the scrolling bar and the playback will take around nine minutes and the message will appear at the end so make sure that the right action is selected and click play. I will skip this part and see you in a few. Ok, the playback is finished. Click continue and close the action span. This is the result of the playback and we will see in a few how to customize it. Ok, now here in the layers panel, open the main group speed output by clicking on its arrow. As you can see there will be a mass of layers, all the layers that were generated during the playback. And to quickly reorganize it, hold Alt on your keyboard and click again the icon of the speed output group. Now release Alt from your keyboard and open the group again. As you can see all the layers now are better organized. Now let's take a look at what each of these subgroups are doing on the image. Starting from the top we have post effects, foreground effects, front blurs, outline blurs, and prints. Okay. Before taking a look at each subgroup, there are a few important things to know. And all the layers and effects of the project works in a similar way. And there are four uh, standard operations that you can do to, to customize the whole project. So let's take a look at this four customization method. So let's open the front bars. Hide them all and take uh, front 6 as an example. The first thing that you can do with all of these layers is to try different blending modes. In this case the front 6, six layer is in normal but a lot of other blending modes uh, will work very good like multiply, darken, color barn, linear barn, also lightning, screen, the dodge, overlay and soft light. If you are using a layer in color dodge or linear dodge and you want to modify its opacity, make sure to use the fill parameter instead of, of the opacity parameter. This is because the option transparency shapes layer is active the layer styles panel. This means that when you are modifying the fill opacity, it simulates the bloom effect that you can have only when working on 32 bit images. Okay, let's close this. 
Next thing, each layer is provided of max channel and also each group. Uh, this means that you can use this max channel to reveal or hide parts of the layers. Uh, so for example, I can select the max channel, pick a brush with a black color, change the size a bit, and brush over the areas that I want to hide. And if I pick a white color, I will reveal these areas. If the mask channel is white, using a black brush will hide parts of the layer. While if the mask channel is black, using a white brush will reveal parts of the layer. The third customization option is very simple. You can move, rotate and scale all of these layers. But with some of, some of them, when you activate the transform tool, a never message will appear. Let's take a look at it. For example, here with single flare, if I want to activate the transform tool, this message will appear. To avoid it, just unlock the max channel and the layer. And now you can apply the transform tool. Okay. Last thing is that pretty much all the blur effects are provided of one or two motion blur smart filters. If there are two motion blur smart filters, one is for the vertical blur and one is for the horizontal blur. And you can tweak them to get the best results. Now that you know these four customization options and if you have uh, at least a basic knowledge of Photoshop, you are ready to customize the whole project. There is not a rule of where to start the customization, it really depends on what you want to achieve. Now let's take a quick look to all the other layers inside the subgroups, starting from the, the top. Open the post effects group. The first two layers are simple adjustment layers for levels and hue saturation. You can double click the thumbnail to edit them. Third one, global contrast. Here you can modify the opacity of this layer to set the amount of contrast in, the, in your image. Next we have a gradient thing, which is a color correction layer. Unhide it. This layer is by default set to color dodge blending mode, but it works very good also in other blending modes like lighten, overlay, linear dodge, UV light or supreme light. And in this case it is provided of also of a gradient overlay that can be tweaked. And if you check how it is in normal mode, you can see that it is a simple gradient. In fact this gradient can be modified here in the layer styles. Okay. So let's see also soft light how it works. Okay. Then there is the tint layer. Let's hide the gradient tint and unhide the tint layer. Uh, this layer works uh, exactly like the gradient tint layer. The only difference is that this is a solid color layer, so if you want to change the color, double click its thumbnail. Then there is the green one and green two layers, and here you can try different combinations of blending mode and modify also their opacity. Uh, green one is set to soft light, while green two is in color dodge. You can try different combinations here. Last layer of the post effects subgroup is base recover. Uh, this layer can be very useful to quickly recover important parts of our main character. So, for example, select the mass channel, pick a brush with a white color, and now we, we can reveal parts of the original image. Maybe less hardness. And during these operations, also using a lower opacity in the brush is already key. 
okay and this operation can be done in on each single layer or at the end using this base recover layer okay next subgroup is foreground effects group and the first layer is single flare which is this one and here if you modify the fill parameter you can clearly see the blue method that I previously mentioned okay and here you can use color dodge blending mode uh, or linear dodge blending mode to make the flare burn with the background and also you can double click the flare uh, apply a overlay, color overlay layer style to the flare like this to make it colored then close and save so you can have a colored layer, uh, colored flare you can also duplicate this layer many times to create multiple flares and it works very good when positioned near white spots of the main character then there are the foreground lights and the foreground objects these layers are really easy to use, you can change the fill parameter, uh, change the blending mode and also apply transformation to all of these layers. Then we have the front blurs and the outline blurs group and basically all of these layers you can use the standard customization methods and they are really easy to customize. Next thing we have the base blurs. And also here you can apply the same customization methods used for the other blurs. Okay. Next subgroup is the base, which is our main character. First layer of the of the subgroup is the base main, which is this one. Okay. Then we have the HDR effect and the sharpen effect. Here you can modify for both of the layers the opacity parameter. Then we have base blend. This group helps to blend the base with the rest of the effects. And also in these layers you can try to modify and try different combination of blending modes. And then there is the trace group. And here you can find many back trace that you can use. Let's take a look at them one by one. This is trail one. And also to these layers, you can apply the standard customization methods. Last group is background effects. The first four layers of this group add some lightning to the overall image. Okay. And you can modify the opacity parameter of each one of these layers and also modify the gradient overlay layer style. Then we have the lines FX for the background. And also here you can uh, apply the standard customization methods. And last layer, we have a simple blurred background. And here, of course, you can modify the motion blur if you want, if you want to have more motion blur. And this is all. Thank you for your attention.